Hi, and welcome to part three of an introduction to Avaya Breeze. My name is Andrew Prokop, and today I want to expand upon the mate call snapping that you saw in parts one and parts two of this video series. So far, I've shown you how to put together a simple workflow that exercises a few of the core aspects of Breeze. In this video, I want to add a DTMF prompt and introduce you to Breeze decision logic. Are you ready to go? Great, let's get started. Here's the workflow I've been writing. It makes a call, plays an announcement, and then drops the call. For this lesson, I'm going to proceed play announcement with a prompt that adds to the call at party if he or she would actually like to hear the robocall text. Yes, it's still a fairly impractical application, but the concepts are important, and I will ultimately apply them to more practical workflows. To make room for some new tasks, I'm going to pull everything over to the right. I will now delete the connection between make call and play announcement. And in its place, I'm going to add a play and connect task. I will now open play and collect and set the task properties. So I have a simple message, press one for an important. need to inform the task how many digits we're collecting. In this case, it's only one. We're going to collect the digit from the call at party. We need to go into input mapping, and we need to uh, inform the task of the universal call ID that it will be running its operations on. We're going to take the one from the make call. We're going to save that. I'm going to hit OK. Breeze provides three ways to add decision-making logic. If I open up the gateways cabinet, I see an exclusive gateway, inclusive gateway, and parallel gateway. They work as follows. Exclusive gateway allows you to choose one option from many. Inclusive gateway allows you to choose multiple options from many. And finally, parallel gateway allows you to simultaneously choose all options. For this example, exclusive gateway is the correct choice. The call at party will only press a single DTMF digit and only one action will follow from that. I will add the exclusive gateway and connect the tasks. I also want to add another drop call. This drop call will be the second option out of the exclusive gateway. And I'm going to add an end event. Basically close off this particular thread. Before I complete the decision logic, I need to return to play and collect. And I need to select the output mapping. Play and collect generates a variety of values. Of importance to us are the digits that are collected. I can make this information publicly available by clicking the plus sign. I'll save this. Okay. Complete this. I will now open the connection from the exclusive gateway to play announcement. This will be the one that will be Press 1 to hear the announcement. So we'll open this one up. I like to label my paths. I'm going to call this play. Give it a sequence number. It'll be the first one checked. Now go through and set a condition. The condition will be based on the digit that we just collected. So I will say from play and collect 1, output 1, these digits, if they equal, one, I can validate my expression. Expression is valid. I can save it. I can hit OK. I will now look at the connection to drop call. An exclusive gateway requires a default path. In this case, we only have two options, press 1 or press 2. And really, I'll take the simple case out 
and I'll say anything other than a one will send you to the default path. So for the default, this will be the sequence number two. To indicate that it's a de default path, you set no condition. We hit OK. We've now completed the decision-making logic. Press one to hear an announcement. Press two, or in this case, anything other than one to drop the call. Which reminds me, we never went into drop call to map the universal call ID from make call over to drop call. So are we there? Have we completed the workflow? Well, let's see if it, let's see at least if it validates. Click validate workflow. And it comes back and says zero errors and zero warnings. So we're good to go. Let's save the workflow. And now let's deploy the workflow. And the workflow has been deployed. It's now time to test the snap-in. So let's return to cluster administration. We're going to launch the admin console. We're going to choose our workflow. We're going to create an instance. Press one for an important announcement. Press two I'll to press one. the call. Hi from Breeze. This is the sound of an attribute. Remember, that's what we had in the second video. So let's try this again. Press one for an important announcement. Press two now I'll press two, but remember I could press two or three or four. It's anything other than one because this will be our default path. And what will happen? The call will drop just as expected. There is much that you can do with voice prompting and decision logic. Again, this make call snapping is very simple, but I hope you see that the possibilities are endless with this technology. I've reached the end of what I want to do with this particular snap-in, and beginning with part four of this series, I will be concentrating on managing and manipulating incoming calls. Frankly, they are far more interesting than what I've shown you so far, but also they're slightly more complicated. With that, I will complete this installment of my introduction to Avaya Breeze. Please subscribe to the Aero Systems Integration YouTube channel for further installments. Bye for now.